And here we are. So welcome to yet another streaming from Animation Pandemic. This time around, we have a bunch of people, probably too many. Let's see how we can handle them without uh, being too noisy. And today we have a special guest with us. We have Simone Giampaolo. And Simone Giampaolo is an animation. <laughs> Simone Giampaolo is an animation director whom I met a while ago, and uh, he's joining us today to talk about networking and the importance of it. And Simone, can and and then we have before we we ask Simone to introduce himself a bit better than what I did. We have uh, Max Bottega, who has been with us for all the other calls. Max Bottega is a game artist, and he's just finished working on. Um, Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk, right? Yeah, we can say I just started working on the next adventure. Um, I'm writing a game with a couple of friends. I started nice. literally this month, yes. That sounds cool. And then we have Daniele Duri, who's, I would like to hey. say he just finished working on Cyberpunk, but I think he didn't. <laughs> I, I still have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there, there is, as you can guess, there is, a, you know, there is expansions, expansion things. And so, yeah, there is always stuff to do. Yes. And then we have Francesca Pesce, who is compositing and lighting at Blue Zoo Animation, right? Yes. Sometimes leading, sometimes revising, depends on the day. <laughs> Nice. So let's introduce Simone and then we can talk about uh, networking and, and what we think about it. And Simone, so... Hello, we, hello. Where do you come from, professionally speaking? I, I have to say something before I start. I watched yeah? Luca three days ago. And since we are all from Italy, I suggest we all speak like that. Uh, <laughs> Francesca, Santa Mozzarella, I haven't seen you for a while. Let's talk about networking. Uh, I don't know if you watched Luca, by, but all the characters talk like that. For I really, I said it was a bit... Okay. Anyway, my <laughs> name is uh, Simone Giampaolo. I'm uh, based in London. I'm an animation director uh, who's been in the industry for around seven, eight years. Uh, I'm originally from the Italian side of Switzerland. That's why I have this accent like everyone else <laughs> in this call. And uh, I've been working uh, for many different studios really in the UK. Uh, I started my career at the Blue Zoo where I became animation director, where I met uh, the wonderful Francesca. Uh, then I moved uh, a bit around to Axis. Uh, I'm wrapped by Ardman Animation, with which I, I sometimes collaborate for commercial work, uh, and uh, Jellyfish Pictures. Uh, and I am currently directing a TV series uh, for a big British broadcaster that I cannot mention right now uh, at Ritzy Animation in, uh, in central London. So that's uh, that's been a bit my my story so far from uh, starting as a full time employee at Blue Zoo for uh, four or five years and then going freelancer and collaborating with many different studios around the nice. UK. So in practice, you're working on shows that if you told us about them, you would have to kill us, right? <laughs> No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, I, 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 I have a feeling uh, Max maybe is, uh, uh, you know, has got more. Uh, the NDA is more valuable than than, than mine. But anyway, uh, after all, they are just cartoons for kids, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I'm, just I'm not sure. To have fun. Maybe Disney wouldn't agree about the, this definition. Disney, no, Disney wouldn't agree at all. <laughs> also, Pokemon wouldn't like it. <laughs> also, Pokemon. Francesca is working. Can I say you're working on Pokemon? Is oh, yeah, 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 because Brazil works a lot for Pokemon. Okay. So, yeah, so, and, and we also know that Simone just finished working on a short movie in which he put together a bunch of people, right, Simone, to pull it off. And I think about 20 directors uh, collaborating on it. And I went through the credits and the credits were rather long and they included a bunch of other people. I didn't really think they I would find in there. So can you tell us 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think only a child is a. I'm only a child, good, uh, and I don't. Sorry, only a child is a very good uh, uh, example of where networking can bring you. Because without uh, a good, uh, good networking skills, I wouldn't have been able to assemble all this array and and this uh, this uh, dream team of different animation directors who came together and brought different segments, different techniques together for this short. So basically, only a child is a visual poem, uh, giving shape and color to the. Uh, beautiful environmental speech that was given by Severn Kali Suzuki in 1992 at the United Nations Summit in Rio de Janeiro. So 30 years ago, this young 12 years old girl, uh, many years before Greta Thunberg, she went to the United Nations and gave this beautiful speech. And when I heard it, I, I really started visualizing it as a, as a beautiful, uh, eclectic, uh, um, animated short made out of different techniques. So the big challenge was to find the right talent and assemble this group of different people which could do send animation, stop motion, 2D traditional, 2D digital, CGI, paint on glass, and so on. Uh, we have almost every technique in the book there. Yeah, in fact, I, I watched the whole movie and I was quite surprised. There is such a variety of techniques and styles included in the movie that I was really surprised. The editing is also quite good, in my opinion. It's actually very good. So uh, well done over there. And how did you, I mean, uh, the list of credits is super long. We I will ask you how did you manage to meet these people and convince them to, to join? Um, maybe it's good stopping for a second before we get there, though, uh, and check what's the meaning of networking. <laughs> so what is networking? What's the definition of networking before we go on? So I'm going to the Cambridge Dictionary. Let's read over there. Let's see if we can read it. So uh, networking is the activity of meeting people who might be useful to know, especially in your job. That's a... <laughs> That's a pretty utilitaristic definition. Maybe there is something a bit different. So let's let's check something else. But that's already quite useful. It, it suggests that there is something of uh, utility behind networking. But I think there, there may be something more. And this dictionary.com web, web page suggests that net networking is a supportive system of sharing information and services among individuals and groups having a common interest. I think this is a bit better as a definition because it doesn't mean, I mean, because networking can be also, I guess, considered an, ex an exchange of information and ideas, not just I need you or I need this or I need that and we exchange uh, favors or... Um, um, I don't know, techniques uh, well, or products rather. And I, I even found uh, a definition on inv investopedia.com, which is about investing, of course. It's an educational resource for investing. And over there, networking is considered the, ex the exchange of information and ideas among people with a common profession or special interest, usually in an informal social setting. This is quite interesting, the informal social setting. Network, networking often begins with a single point of common ground. So I guess at this stage, we can ask, uh, how did you assemble the team, Simone? How, where, how, where did you meet these people? How did you pick them? How did they pick you? Uh, first of all, I, I needed to get in touch with Severn Kali Suzuki herself. I wanted to have her blessing. Therefore, I wrote an email, I got in touch with uh, her agent, Susan Johnston. Uh, I, I got in touch with her directly and she was thrilled. She was very excited about, you know, turning her speech into a, an animated film. And once I had that blessing, once I had that back, backing of, you know, the actual author of the speech, then I, I managed to be more confident when approaching other people. That was very important, a very important step. Since I decided to do this short film at home, it was the first time for me that I applied for fundings in Switzerland. I approached a production company in Lugano, in, uh, in the Italian side of Switzerland. Uh, its name is uh, Amca Films, and they were really, really good at helping me putting together a dossier, putting together a deck to present the idea to the Swiss government. So we actually got fundings 
from the Swiss government in order to make this film come, come to life. Uh, one of the rules, though, in order to get these fundings was that over 80% of the team had to be Swiss. So even though I collaborated with some international talent for editing, uh, color grading, uh, music, uh, uh, I had to make a very, very deep research in Switzerland of the my favorite talents, my favorite animators who actually live, in, live and work in Switzerland. Therefore, my research uh, got narrowed and, mm -hmm. and that was good because otherwise I would have gotten lost. You know, there are so many people around the globe who could, could have done that. But I, I managed to find a, uh, a team of people very enthusiastic and, and very diverse in terms of styles. So it, that's how, that, that's really the reason and, and the way I, I started approaching people, making that research first in Switzerland and then expanding internationally if some roles were missing. Simone, given how long the list is and the fact alone that you had to uh, find animators, like 80% of them uh, based in Switzerland, not just Swiss, but like living in Switzerland, uh, it tells us probably that Switzerland is extremely active in animation because like it's a it's a small place right with all respect but it's a it's a, it's a small country so uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's, it's really it's impressive to it's pretty impressive that you could uh, source that those many people just there and we've all Switzerland is very active uh, in animation yeah that's true but every animation director or animation artist uh, usually works uh, on her own or on his own it's more of a niche, uh, um, how do you call it? Like uh, they become sort of authors, they become sort of uh, directors of short films and everyone tends to work independently. Um, therefore, this Only a Child was a bit of a, um, a shake in the animation industry. It was a bit of a, an exception where uh, people came together really to create one common short is film, it, but, it because... but it was very active. Yeah. Is it because they, 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 there are no big production there? So uh, uh, it's, it's more like an archipelago of smaller studios and smaller teams? Or it's because like it, by culture, maybe people prefer to be like more authors of their own stuff? What's, what's... Yeah, I think there is less, uh, less production. That's one of the main reasons. So there are not big studios. Usually studios tend to take small commercial jobs. And they tend mm -hmm. to do that. And sometimes one or two people are enough to make those those commercial jobs. So that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons. Uh, Switzerland is very dynamic on the animation scene when it comes to co-productions, though. There are co-productions with France, uh, with Germany, and they bring some beautiful films or TV series to life, such as uh, uh, Ma vie de courgette, uh, My Life. Uh, 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 life uh, yeah, uh, did you watch it? Uh, I, watched, My, I watched a part of it. No, no. My life is a zucchini mm. uh, that came out uh, three years ago. It got also nominated for an Oscar, and that's a perfect example of how you know Switzerland collaborates with other countries when it comes to um, like uh, private, uh, more independent production. My life is a zucchini. Yeah, that's that's the one. When it comes to TV series, it cannot compete with uh, the UK industry or even the Italian industry. Like the, there is not much going on, unfortunately. I see. And did you know any of the people you worked with before this project? Or I mean, are they, are they all brand new contacts in your network, or are there people that you knew already? No, no, I, I knew I knew some of them before. Uh, not all of them, but I would say around half of them. I met before uh, because Switzerland, as you said, is, is a small country, you know, uh, compared to, to other European countries. Uh, and there are only two big festivals of animation films. One of them is Fantoche, which takes place every September in Baden. And, and you, sooner or later, you, you start meeting everyone. <laughs> so I, I knew people from before, but I never had a chance to work with them on the same project. So this was a bit of a, an experiment, but also a dream of mine to start collaborating with people I've always admired. I've always looked up to, you know, as a, in terms of style or in terms of uh, uh, storytelling. And there was a chance to really 
co-direct uh, the different segments, basically, of this short film. And uh, that was really inspirational for me. Do you, do you think that... Do you think that have you, if you didn't meet these people beforehand, how do you think that would have affected the project? I mean, I'm, what I'm curious to know if, is if um, how much of a difference there is between not having this network pre-established when you do a project like this one and having it pre-established, if you see what I mean. That, that's a very good point, Amedeo, because I got, uh, when I... I chose my dream team, I got in touch with them. I almost immediately got lots of yes, yeses. Oh. They, they, they said, you know, oh, uh, you know, um, it depends on timing, schedule and budget, but I would be super happy to participate. And I got a lot of answers because these people uh, knew me before or I, we met before or they heard about my work before or I met friends of them before in the, nice. in the industry. So there was that sort of uh, trust membrane, that trust layer that they knew that I was serious about that. They, they, so, they, they didn't just see a, a random name popping in their uh, email inbox and say, oh, who's this uh, Simone guy who wants to make such an ambitious <laughs> collaboration? You know, they knew they knew my background before and that gave i think the project more trust so okay can, can we say that just before somebody goes out to a festival and starts distributing business cards randomly around can we say that probably it's better to first establish yourself as a professional <laughs> <laughs> but i would say it's pretty mandatory right <laughs> Well, well, I, I mean, a... I, at least if you if you are suggesting other people to make a project together, at least you have to introduce your work first. You cannot go to someone and say, "Hey, let's make a short film together." Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, if they don't know your background, they don't know your style, they don't know what you've worked on before. So that's very, very important, I think. <laughs> It's going to be amazing. Let's join join us. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> well, for now, work, and then we will discuss that later. <laughs> I think we need to make a point also that, like, sometimes people do contact. I think, like, uh, you and I have been contacted a few times by random people ah, saying, yeah, yeah. "Why don't you join us for this project so without it, without knowing them?" And maybe we no pay or little pay. Yeah. Um, so ever since Simone, ever since uh, and and Max as well, I think you're interested in this. Ever since I started the YouTube channel, I receive a, I receive a lot of job offers, but they are usually job offers which are worded as a single sentence, something like "Me and my friends want to make a TV show animated for us." And they don't explain anything. They don't tell me who they are. They, the email maybe is a nickname. So I don't even know who these people are. And it, it's very difficult for me to consider, to even consider the job because I don't know who, who's speaking on the other side and I don't know the specs of the project. So, <laughs> so if those been... people are watching now, just so, yeah. random so, people, please know you have to introduce yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Max. I mean, it sounds it sounds uh, something like b which belongs to common sense, but in practice, yes. Don't assume that uh, that you know the person you're talking to or that they know you. So, if you, especially if you have an offer to make of that kind for which you need the work of somebody, uh, make sure that you have introduced yourself and maybe establish your 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 credibility somehow. I think Simone in calling um, the some sort of a testimonial before making the movie i think you that was a very good step in establishing some sort of credibility there you're not anymore some some random dude who wants to make a splash in the movie making industry but you're somebody who is who has some backing somewhere so they they can relate not only to you but also to the backing so i think it's a it's a very good idea to have that so introduce yourself i think it, it it's something you probably find also in the manuals of networking right you probably should introduce yourself as a first step <laughs> <laughs> also always keep in mind that everyone in the animation industry has dream project on uh, you know in the back of their head and in their drawers they have dream projects don't just approach someone and say oh i've got uh, i wrote a, 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 a short story i've got an idea for a short you should read it and you know i think we can make it and it's going to be so fun everyone has got short stories they want to make everyone has already thought at some point of, of some sketches or personal projects mm -hmm. so be aware of that respect that don't don't go to someone uh, randomly saying 
I think this idea is going to save the day and I think you should be part of it because, you know, everyone has got those dreams and everyone has got ideas. So just be aware of that before you, uh, how can I say, before you advertise your mini story or your short script in such a, you know, uh, glorious way. You know, everyone has got some some ideas and stories to, to hey. make it. I think you're making a very good point because, in fact, in fact, one of the definitions we have seen on networking is that these people must have something in common. They have usually something in common to start the conversation. So it's a good idea to establish what is it that you have in common <laughs> before uh, going straight on into a wedding. I think that's not advisable in any scenario, right? <laughs> so, yes, I, I would say see who you have in front of you probably that's a better idea than just pitching the story right off the bat. I mean, you we, we don't even know if the other person is interested in listening to what we have to say. So I think it's a good idea to do that. I take it that, Simone, you visit a lot of festivals and uh, a lot of events where people of the industry meet. I, lo I love it, yes. And that's why I've been very depressed over the past year <laughs> because my film started going around festivals and they were online. And that w was very heartbreaking, you know, I, I worked so hard and the whole Only a Child team has worked so hard and most of the screenings so far ha have happened uh, online. Even okay. the big screenings such as Seagraph, uh, uh, which is going to happen in a few months, is going to be online and I cannot go there in person because I, I really love festival. I, I always I try to go to NSC very often. Uh, I try to go to other events in the UK. Uh, that take place and we can talk more about later yes but yeah i i'm a big uh, big fan of meeting people in in person while watching something that that really inspires me and uh, i have the impression it's that, a helpful yeah that, that this lack of uh, personal interaction like all these uh big shows like game shows animation shows meetings and such they since they are not there in person anymore they lost some kind of attraction and because they're inspiring people it's, it's very different to see all together something on the screen or like be there sitting on the on, on the chairs in front of a large screen mm. knowing that the director is there knowing that the staff is there um so i i, I think there's gonna be like it must have some some side effect on the on the, the industry for sure especially towards young people that maybe needs that kind need the kind of inspiration to do that more one more step to get and uh, and do their own things or like uh, meet with other people form teams that part is completely uh, uh, removed from the online experience but i think it's also like for people with experience Mark, that i found it like I remember when i went to the fmx there were people uh, getting in touch with uh, with me or with my team of people from blue zoo there because they wanted to start a collaboration with blue zoo and this is the sort of things you do in person i mean it, like it's, otherwise it's, there, it's exactly as like an email sent from uh georgia in that case saying oh i want to have to, to do a collaboration with you blue zoo and, uh, and 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 the answer would have been straight away no uh, but if you know a person if you meet the person you know that seems like a decent person a decent guy and it shows his, your your portfolio his portfolio i think it helps and, uh, and in fact, there was a communication right that in that moment. But if you do it, everything's online, um, that's not going to happen. And uh, you don't even know and yet. You just receive an email and, and yeah, and you don't know and what's behind it. There are also some, there is also a serendipity effect to meeting people in, at these events, in my opinion. It's As called in, an alcohol. It's called alcohol <laughs> and parties, <laughs> usually. <laughs> And a bit of really clubbing, I suppose. See, Simone Cheers. is already giving a good example there. Yeah. And, it's networking and... art right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the, the thing is, very often you go to an event with the idea in mind that you want to achieve uh, something in particular. But then what you get is often a side effect. You not, don't necessarily want what you went there for, but you discover that there's something interesting as well that you could do with someone you have known and met and you didn't think of the idea they thought about. Or simply speaking, they know someone who knows someone who knows someone. You didn't quite imagine that that could happen. For instance, Francesca, when Francesca went to the FMX, she met uh, this person who had a company in Georgia. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, I happen to have a, a student who was originally from originally from there, and the student was looking for a place where to work, but due to some restriction, it couldn't quite they couldn't quite work in the nation where they were studying. So we managed to connect the student with this person that Francesca met with, and now they're working together, which it, it happened in a completely unplanned way, and it could have That's happened a only. That's lucky student. Yes. It's, I think, yes, I think. It's also a really nice studio as well. They, 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 I didn't even expect it, sorry. Like it was in, in Georgia, they, um, I didn't even know there was a um, CG going on there, but there is, and uh, yeah, the, the small studio had a really nice two dolls uh, they were putting out, uh, I don't know, maybe every every week or every month. So like they basically like were keep producing things even just for fun. Um, yeah. It's a really solid studio, I think. And in fact, the person who is working in Georgia now is in, on the call, is on the in the chat, <laughs> and is saying Georgia. hi. <laughs> oh, Georgia! <laughs> so, the, the other Georgia, not in the US. <laughs> the other Georgia, yes. And the the other thing is, I don't know. Me, I'm not particularly. Um, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm very good at networking myself. Uh, I when I am in a crowded place, I don't feel very comfortable. And, and so I, I tend not to like to go to big events in general. But I have to say that when I went to NC, I left with a lot of energy and I really wanted to animate after that. I was, if I had any doubts, going to NC just made it for me. But do you have to go to events to network or, or networking happens a bit of everywhere? What do you think? Uh, well, events can happen. Every city has got uh, its own events. Um, most of the people I, I managed to get in touch with uh, in the UK industry uh, happen to be in social events that happen in London. There are a few of them that uh, I really miss because uh, they haven't happened for over 12 months now. But I, I, was a big, um, I, I was a big fan of the event called Festivals. For example, which was happening every two or three months in a, in a pub in central London in Piccadilly. Uh, mm -hmm. I go to events such as Sino Evil, where some directors or some companies present their own work. Blue Zoo even presented uh, their own work once at uh, Sino Evil. Loop the Loop uh, is another one. Uh, what else? The animation, uh, the London Animation Club, like. Uh, and, and then there is SIGGRAPH London. I, I'm a board member of SIGGRAPH London. And they are so, so active in terms of organizing, organizing social events, even online now. And I met most of the people there, the people I know in the animation industry in London, are through these social events. I, I love them because I, I get a chance to meet new talent or people who, you know, can can help me or, or, or I can help finding a new job. I, I, can, I can give you a, an example. Uh, this girl, uh, I don't want to make uh, names, but I will call her Julia just for, <laughs> for, this, uh, for this instance. Uh, Julia like, uh, like the uh, character in Luca. Uh, Julia, I met her at a SIGGRAPH social event called Drink and Draw around two years ago, and she was uh, uh, studying at Ringling College in the US. So she's originally from the UK, but she was, you know, traveling and, and it was during her summer break that we met. And uh, she, we kept in touch after that, you know, I said, oh, Ringling College is a, such a wonderful uh, school. I see all the short films, you know, you must be very talented. Let's keep in touch. And uh, Julia graduated made a wonderful short, got in touch and say, hey, Simone, we met a few few months back. You do you remember? Uh, and thanks to that, thanks to that encounter, we managed to work together at Ardman. I called her for a project, a commercial project at Ardman as storyboard artist and animator. And now she's working again with me at Rizzi Animation on this uh, TV series for kids that is coming out in a, in a month or in a couple of months. So. Yeah, that's that's an example. So, that's that. This is it. That's why people should go to these kind of events, even if they are small events in a in a city, not international events such as NSC or FMX or CTN in in the US. You know, even if they are smaller events in your own bubble, in your own industry bubble, they can bring such 
positive effects in the future. So I, I think we can say that Max was right. Drink and draw, I guess alcohol can help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like, I don't know, just taking from yeah. your own experience, Simone, I think you do actually have also like a background, a lot of people that you that you met in while working. And because you you obviously from, I think I remember when you joined Blizu, like you basically stepped from uh, junior animator onto directing uh, really quickly. So you, you obviously put, did a really good impression on the, in the studio, and and this uh, I think also bit of imposter this... syndrome there. Oh yeah. no, 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 no! I was there, I was there, so I it wasn't uh, you weren't an imposter. I think it's it's like you gave a good impression to people, so that means like then there are people that uh, you might be working now as well that you met at that time. So I, it's just like for me to say that networking can also happen when you do well your job or you're passionate about what you're doing and the people automatically will trust you and so they it's not a net, it's a network that will stay um strong really long for long because they they know that if they work with you you will bring us a, a, a project from the beginning to the end so it's easy it's, it's easy to trust you basically once they work you're with you. very yeah you're very right and there is nothing better than trying to bond with your colleagues uh, I will make another example now. This time I can make names. Uh, I worked in, uh, I started at, at Blue Zoo Animation in the uh, commercial department where you are working now, Francesca. And uh, I, um, I was a newbie, but in my team, there were some veterans, which were Dan Edgley and Charlie Batho. They stayed at Blue Zoo for quite some time. And three years ago, maybe more, but they, they decided to start their own company. And uh, after starting their own company, they, they made lots of commercial and they got their first TV series out, uh, which is the one I'm directing right now with them. Uh, so the reason why they called me back to do this, the directing of this series is because we worked together nicely and we, we, we were, we, we bonded as teammates and colleagues at Blue Zoo, you know, so that, that's very important as well to try to bond. I don't want to... I don't want to say this helps. That that isn't true. <laughs> there are uh, like it could be Coca Cola. No, Coca Cola is bad. <laughs> what am I saying? Aqua, aqua. <laughs> like Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Drink it water. It could be stuff. orange juice. Uh, it could be quinotto. It could be anything. But just spending a few hours after work with your colleagues, I think it's a very very important step in your career. It's a very fundamental. Uh, growing experience because you can start hearing their opinions opinions of people who have worked in the studio for longer and so on so that was very important for me at blue zoo for example to start bonding with people in my team i think if you work well together it's a bit more natural for you to chat and want to meet even after work sometimes because if you have a very tense relationship as you work together with someone you're less likely or this person is less likely to want to meet you <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so I think it goes without saying almost in a way. But yes, Francesca and Simone are making an excellent point. You need to be known for someone who delivers in general. In, yeah, reputation so you, is fundamental to, yeah. to, to, to build a decent network. And in, I think, for instance, uh, in in uh, in the field of modeling, for instance, whenever I needed anything in terms of opinions, I would go back to Max, because when we worked together, I had the feeling that he would deliver on what he started, and I didn't have to worry about it. And so we actually worked together in a few occasions just because of that. I think. We, I don't. I don't and think hopefully, we will, we will work again together. Hopefully, <laughs> it will happen. I mean, we are right now in a way. Well, yeah, of, of course. <laughs> So, but I'm not uh, modeling anything for you right now. No, no, of course. But I wouldn't <laughs> ask. Oh, I, I, now Max is too senior for modeling for me anyway, or uh, <laughs> or me for animating. But I think it's it's a relationship we were, which was born that way. And uh, there was a mutual trust in the work we did. So you never know. I, I think you shouldn't really be treating people as disposable in a production. I, to be honest, I... I always, I always had mixed feelings about those pub evenings at, at, in the office because they felt like we w people can be coerced into having some sort of mingling. Um, but I think in a way they can be really, really useful. I mean, even just to have some fun if you can talk to 
to people who you had found an effort you know it's not always easy and and mm. honestly you're not always in the right mood for mingling uh, you know it comes the end of the day you're tired you think oh i can't wait to go home and cook something nice but you know i i think especially when you're trying to establish your career and you're quite young uh, in the industry i think it's worth making an effort, you know, saying, hey, I, why not? If they invite me to, to chat and have a drink after work, why not, you know, tagging along and, and just uh, express my, my feelings and my, my thoughts on a, on a project, for example. Uh, that's very positive. And, and that can bring to personal projects as well. That is something else I wanted to talk about. Like, in, in, Only a Child was sort of a personal project it was uh, there was a, a production studio involved uh, Amka films uh, and that was their first animated films they've ever done but it, it felt like a personal project almost because you know we were bonding and, and interacting uh, almost as a uh, side project with um, uh, with the different artists involved but um, I I bonded with other people uh, at for example, at Blue Zoo, at Jellyfish Pictures. And uh, and then, you know, we managed to make a short film, a very short uh, clip together uh, last year for Christmas. Uh, the character is a quokka. It's like a very furry, cute, uh, um, very squishy and, and jolly animal, which uh, sort of gets obsessed about social media and tries to become a uh, social media influencer. There is a whole story behind, but the reason why that was born is because we were saying with uh, with these colleagues, uh, uh, we should make something. We should make a short film or a or a short clip together. You know, something different from uh, from our daily job. And that, this is where personal projects can start. And personal projects can always bring magical results. You know, you never know where they can end up. I don't know if Francesca or you, Amedeo, you also are involved in some um, personal projects here and yes. there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody is. <laughs> yeah, everybody is. It's like a, when you said that, that don't 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 tell to to someone you got a great idea uh, because everybody has an idea. It really resonated with me because I think everybody, me and everybody I know, do have their own idea. So that's why I was really curious about how you convince them because I think it's uh, yeah, there is a bit it's a lot. Of uh, you need to be really tactful when talking to people about like yes, um, giving their time to your project rather than uh, anything else. I I have to say that I find it a bit difficult to after work. I I'm rarely in the in the mood of going out uh, <laughs> with colleagues, but it it's a personal thing. Also, I think maybe when I I think one thing I noticed with Max is that. Um, he has maybe a different way of socializing than I do, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and in general, I think it's it's more about gaming. In, in your case, Max, uh, correct me if what I'm do, wrong. What do you mean? Uh, like the, the, uh, you're talking uh, about the personal way of like socializing with I people. I think or yes. The... I think that you you tend to you want to play games with people, as in you want to play board games, you want to game together. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah. That, I think, That's in fact, like most of my my networking is not uh, doesn't come from e events because from one reason or the other. Well, what the main reason is that I was out of the uh, um, out of Europe and out of uh, US or, or, or for a long time, so there was no chance for me to participate into events. But in in, in more in general, all my networking comes from uh, ex colleagues and people that I befriend, uh, I became friend with. Uh, because I, I love to mingle with them. Uh, of course, this is one thing that has to be safe, especially to people that are young and uh, recently got into the job. Use these first few years that you've got to, to, to go to parties after work, because the longer you wait, the harder it gets. The older you wait, <laughs> like the time magically disappears from your schedule. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 and also the people around you, they get older, they get kids and they will not be able to attend to after part, like after work parties and, and the pub change sessions, countries. they change countries. So the, it, it gets harder and harder. So in the very few years of your career, I suggest do go to those, uh, uh after work events, talk with people, uh, um, 
And I think especially because our job uh, often requires relocating, uh, you want to have relationship with your colleagues because those are usually the first people that you met in a you meet in a new country. So, yeah, um, and and uh, it's for That's me. That's so true. Yeah, for me, my networking is is something that I uh, I often say it's my biggest resource uh, because that my my modeling skills they can degrade over time i cannot i can be not up to date but my my network i keep it alive um there's always somebody that is either coming back to me because maybe uh, i provided him a job in the past or we had like a great working experience together and now they need help or or they have somebody that uh, they want to suggest for a job or they have like a side project that they want to to create and as a as a, a policy i always listen i always catch that call i always try to organize a meeting online i always try to get a beer if we are in the same city um it's not just purely out of need or like out of like the desire of being like the, the kingpin of of <laughs> some some uh, 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 criminal modeling organization or, or game development it's, it's simply because it's nice to uh, hang out with people that you know and that you have uh, uh, you have dear and mostly that you have a good opinion of uh, reputation it's very important in in networking and if people have a good reputation of you you had like a good interaction at work you can probably call them like 15 20 years later and they will be still there to yeah. uh, uh, listen to you and and Organize the chat. are dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're getting old enough that we can we are, talk this. We are getting to that point where 15 years may be too long to call them back. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> One I, foot in the grave. Yeah. But I but found, I, yeah, sorry. Oh, go on, go on. Sorry. Uh, no, I find like also the networking can also mean not just uh, to find that you need it for to find a job. It's also like a nice resource to because by the times you hear different people, they will give you like uh, some ideas of what uh, maybe you haven't looked into yet. So, for instance, I don't know, uh, someone has, of my friends has looked into a reel and I haven't yet, and I can just check with them like. Uh, how they they're doing something, or I can uh, get some feedback on uh, how to to proceed if I want to get on, into a real. I think it's really useful because you know on your own learning everything, uh, which can be a bit daunting sometimes. And I think like having friends to share this is is really nice. And the network is actually the network of friends that share your um, uh, your hobbies, but also your passion about CG in this case. So that. That can also be uh, really handy. I think. Yeah. I think it's it's important to mention also why this uh, um, weekly meeting exists is because of networking itself. We'll yeah. Because yeah. So uh, well, I think it's worth spending a minute explaining how it happened. So uh, when I found myself working for CD Project uh, for for Cyberpunk, I found out. I'm not sure if Amedeo told me or somebody else, but still. I found out that uh, uh, Daniele Morpai also worked there. I had no freaking idea. So I was I, I went through the internal chat and I, I dropped the bomb on him. Like, you hey, found Morpai. the name, yes. Yeah, I found the name. So I started chatting with him. We didn't we hadn't spoken in 10 years probably. Pretty much. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we started chatting and in the, I, I never lost contact with Amedeo. So I, I immediately let him know that I was in in touch with Morpai, with, with Daniele. Um, and then I started having a one-to-one -one meet, uh, weekly or a meeting with, uh, on, on, on Meet um, online. So, because it was a, the pandemic. So we all wanted mm. to, to see people in the face, uh, uh, even if it was through a, a webcam. Um, and eventually it was like, well, then we should talk all of the three of us together. We had like probably three calls once a week and then Pretty we decided much. to yeah well, then we decided to simply drop this online for everyone to 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 yeah enjoy yeah i remember that we were having these calls and one day i mean we were and generally speaking talking about plans for the futures and 
grievances of the present, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and also production histories normally. And then Max once that once said, maybe we could just put them on Twitch. I mean, they're interesting after, after all to a certain degree. And I think that we should probably push a well, lot more for, for this as well. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know, but just that uh, there are some things that... Uh, they shouldn't be really said publicly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some things you, you can't say publicly, of course, for networking reasons as well. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if, 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 if you want to keep having a job, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes, that's how it started. And and and, and Max was hitting the, the nail on the head when he was saying, go to parties now, meet people now, because it will be di more difficult later. Because one of the issues I have is that a lot of the people I met and I socialized with uh, are not here in London with me right now. They just went to other places, they made families. So in practice, it became very difficult to get in touch at a certain point. You, you, you can still be in a good relation uh, with them, but it's more difficult to talk to them. So in fact, when Max organized this uh, weekly call between me and Daniele, I was very happy to to be part of it. I didn't mind it at all, in fact. I, in, in the meantime, Simona is advertising <laughs> something oh, else. No, sorry, no. <laughs> so, yes. Well, I mean, that's why you should go to new events to meet new people. You're <laughs> right. You're no, you're, you're old I friends. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm, I, ju I'm just kidding. In, my, in fact, I completely agree. And, and when Max was talking about parties, it came to my mind that I used to go to all the parties. That's yeah. something I would do. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I remember. Younger. I remember when I because me and Medea we were together in different jobs. I don't know, maybe two jobs only actually. But the one in Munich, like you were a party beast. Like you should have seen it. Like <laughs> he was. He was going out. This is a good and, moment to to bring up like a picture of Amedeo dressed as like in a, a funky seventy. No, no, I said I don't. I don't have any any. Actually, I started to have pictures of anything only since I have a smartphone. I have to say because before yeah, that I, time, I I don't have much at all. But um, I, yeah, well, I, I remember you were uh, like. Um, Yes. of good old times and party animals uh, i'll show you i'll show you the me oh, oh. which is not anymore <laughs> this oh, was that you uh, about to show oh yes i knew Ooh. you were gonna do that <laughs> this was me uh, a few years back i was young <laughs> slimmer and and beautiful and ready for action <laughs> and i really i really loved you know this socializing part of the work and this, this was, was like a, a an official a Christmas party, uh, yeah. party, right? Christmas party at Blue Zoo. With other uh, uh, hundred people, maybe? Like, uh, so it, it's a real event. It was there. I was there. <laughs> I, I remember it. <laughs> I'll find a picture with you too, Francesca. Ooh. Thanks. <laughs> I, it can't be worse than this one. Way, so. <laughs> and, uh, no, 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 what, I'm trying to, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I, I agree with, with what you said, Max, is uh, I'm not that person anymore. Even though I, I push myself sometimes to go out, uh, meet new people, I, it doesn't come natural. It did come natural before, uh, when I was a junior or I was moving my first steps into the industry. Now I have to make an effort, you know, to do that. And I don't know, maybe because uh, I've been spending so much time at home, you know, under my blanket. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go out anymore. or or because of the pandemic as well that that didn't help uh but but you know the i agree the more years pass the more difficult it is to make that effort and say no i need to socialize now because it's beneficial for my brain for my social skills and for my career as well so it's an effort but i highly recommend even older people people who are established in the industry to to take that step because it's it's always positive to meet younger people or people your age or older than you that have more experience. Always helpful. Are Max you, are is you talking about you. Are you <laughs> single, Simone? It's not single. No, no, no. I'm not, there you I, go. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not nobody, single. Nobody, but, nobody, but I don't have here. kids. That doesn't not, matter. Nobody kids. here is single. And I, I'm pretty sure that's a big drive to get your ass out of the door 
when you should be you want to be sleeping <laughs> i uh, i must agree yeah i i see your point i see I going out a lot though even when i wasn't single but i was going out a lot when i joined blue zoom because i think it was like the heat of the moment like you just met all this um lots of people everybody was really funny i remember like so i went out a lot and then now uh i know the feeling because i don't go out as much in the past years i haven't been going out much uh, but I found it like, for instance, like it's not it's not always that you have to go to parties. Sometimes it's also like a bit of the odd situation where you find yourself able to talk to your colleagues, for instance. So I've just just had this in mm -hmm. mind that now, for instance, we're trying to do like um, we we've been doing some tests about uh, working uh, hybrids, so a bit um, remote, a bit uh, in the studio. And uh, it, it was going by volunteers, so you no, it wasn't compulsory to go there. But by going there once a week, which I honestly did it mostly because so I I move I could move out of the house for one uh, for once a week and walk. Um, actually, it became a moment where I could talk I could talk to, with people, and because it's a small uh, team of people, uh, you actually do quite a lot of the talking. So I, I mean, you talk a lot with them because it's like it's, it becomes really personal. It's not one hundred or four hundred people in the studio. It's basically like ten or nine. So even if it's not a social event. Um, even without thinking, I found myself in a situation where I do talk a bit more with people and uh, we share a bit more information on that day of the week, for instance, now. And then sometimes, yes, then there is the pub as well. But I don't I don't join it all the time, but I, yeah, occasionally I do join. So and it's almost a small team. So I think the other things about networking sometimes um, depends on your personality. If you are in, a, in the middle of 400 people, 500 people, it might be hard for you to get to talk to someone. If you choose small group, it might be much more uh, personal, intimate. So you can uh, you can uh, re uh, rely, you can talk more with them, and it's uh, it's a bit more informal as well. You don't feel like uh, you you're doing a job, basically. In fact, again, this goes back back to having something in common. If you work in a company which has a thousand people, I mean, like Max and Daniele, not only they were working in the same company, but this company was very big, and they were in different nations i mean it's very hard to talk to everybody and know everybody so that there must be uh something else oh there's something from from simone there oh look at that <laughs> ah there you go that's a pretty simone. one <laughs> so, sorry, I'm, i just I'm leave this here that's, that's okay i don't know if i want to look at myself for too long <laughs> please but notice how well to others as swingers Okay, sorry? interesting. Interesting name of, for a place to have a party. Swing. Was this, sorry, was this like the go, the mini golf Swingers. ones? Swingers. Uh, ah, yeah. yes. Okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> mini golf, of course. Yeah. But uh, notice just... how even at mini golf, alcohol is prominent at these parties. <laughs> I, I think one of the peak of my uh, of my networking was me at the end of the party drinking a tequila with the last the the last people left on the party and uh, being completely smashed the next day. I think, uh, yeah, it was like, a, it, I think it was something wrong with the tequila because then the next day we had a reason to talk among the people that had the tequila because we were all, we all had like three days of hangover. It was terrible. Yeah, that's true. I mean, doing something together. Alcohol is bad. Don't Alcohol drink. is bad, but also don't, tequila, don't bad tequila. It's also really bad at the end of the day uh, but, or the night. <laughs> but it's true that doing something together gives you something to, I mean, something in which you create a bond. Um, and, and that's also something that even an accident can be positive in a way. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you never Francesca know. Francesca and I were doing something quite interesting uh, uh, while working together. We put uh, our own time, you know, we actually uh, volunteered our own time while working in the studio uh, to create the uh, live drawing sessions, you know, oh, for free. Yeah. The studio was, was actually paying for those. Uh, after working hours, so it was between six and eight, and uh, we were uh, for a for a time for a period we were organizing them together, mm -hmm. and those live drawing sessions were also a, a way for socializing. You know, there were the drawing session, there was the moment of exchanging opinions, and then usually we went out oh. after, you know, for for a couple of of uh, drinks or just to to share some ideas. So that was an effort that we. We didn't. No one. No one asked us to do that. You know, we were not supposed mm -hmm. to do that, but we wanted. It came natural to say, let's let's get this event created weekly. 
let's put a bit more effort into it, but yeah. let's create a bond, let's create a group that also likes talking and chatting to each other about art. You know, it was not just about drawing naked people, <laughs> it was largely about that. And uh, especially when there was Rui, Oh the, my uh, god, no, okay, no. Rui, no. the Portuguese <laughs> male model that you remember. It was very an amazing well. model. There were also uh, some amazing uh, female models, okay, but uh, Rui maybe was we are specifically going, chosen for us. <laughs> maybe we are going off track in here and we should we should let Simona and Francesca discuss it in some other but place. No, I what, what I'm saying is <laughs> even uh, volunteering a bit of time inside your own studio can create some social dynamics which are very interesting. And yeah, I even think, yeah. Sorry. Don't go on, Francesca, go on. The, the, the thing is about the left drawing, I remember like the, yeah, Simona, you started it and you started it out of like, because you wanted to, to draw. And I joined immediately because I found it like, a, I really wanted to draw and I needed to draw and I didn't have so much time to go outside and maybe go, uh, I don't know, in another uh, zone of London to actually draw. So that was really convenient. So that's why th that was the, the push. So it wasn't, it wasn't forced. It was something that came naturally. And then even the pub, the pub after, that's the other things, like it was on Wednesday, it came completely naturally. It wasn't like, I don't think anybody that joined the pub after was feeling any pressure. There was just really, really this really good vibe that made it possible. And because it was, again, a small team, small group of people, and a lot of us were recurring, it creates this sort of strong bond uh, among the people that were doing left drawing. So it's, uh, again, it's like in a company of 400 people or 100 people back then, then you have a group of 10 people that know each other really well. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Sorry, is it, is it Rui Miguel Ferreira? It could Lisboa? be. It I'm could not be. sure we can put it on a screen, no, guys. No, it's I like, I don't, I, no, I don't, if you find it, you can't, and you cannot. Also, it's <laughs> probably... <laughs> <laughs> no hey Rui, let's say hi to Rui who's uh, listening hi. to us now. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I, I understand the commotion. I, I really understand. <laughs> It, it, it was it was good. I mean, <laughs> Francesca, I, I would meet with Francesca afterwards, and uh, I remember the comments. So she was; they were all very satisfied with the drawing class, uh, and I think it gives any anyway the the model and them. It gives them something to talk about, and it's and it's something that is luckily not related to work. In, in my experience, for instance, since I have troubles uh, separating work and life. Uh, my my networking usually happens through work, so I, I sometimes I organize training sessions for for people just because I was maybe a bit annoyed at the way we were working on a project. So I thought of a way to work a little bit better, and I spontaneously trained people. And I realized without thinking, I realized years later that it left a foot it left a footprint. People, I mean, it established something. I think, and for, so my way of networking is entirely different. If it's a way at all, I'm probably yeah, but that, that's sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I I'm more I am more falling and tripping over things. That's my way of networking. And then after a few years, I realized that it wasn't exactly folding face down. It just looked like that. <laughs> that brings us to, to what you said at the beginning, Amadeo. And lots of people share that, you know, having a bit of uh, uh, being a bit anxious when you are in very large events. I, I, I'll be honest with you, it's not easy for anyone like even people who are used to networking, when we, they step into a room and there are a hundred people chatting about different topics related to films, animation, games, it's not easy sometimes to step in, you know, but networking can be created also in smaller groups, such as this example of live drawing. It can be any social club, it can be live drawing, it can be knitting, it can be uh, running to running around the block with colleagues, you know, all these uh, social events which are a bit more human sized, you know, because yes. it, it is intimidating sometimes, I agree, when you go into Annecy for the first time and suddenly you're surrounded by 10,000 animators, like, who should I talk to? And will they even be interested in talking to me? And, you know, you start asking all these questions, like, what do I have of interest to say right now? And it's, I think it's it's good to start, you know, with smaller steps. If someone is a bit, feels a bit anxious about uh, stepping uh, public, public, publicly and uh, wants to, you know, improve their skills, I think it can start with smaller steps and smaller events. Um, there are lots of good ways to 
uh, to improve your social skills. I, I, I learned it the hard way. I, I haven't told this to many people before, but I, I was a um, um, uh, uh, dialogatore in Italiano. It's a uh, fundraiser, fundraiser for ah. Greenpeace and Amnesty International in Switzerland. Uh, there were two different organizations which organized campaigns. And I was the very annoying person on the street stopping you <laughs> and saying, hey, would you like to become a member of Greenpeace oh, and save some tuna today? And that uh, that was um, that was yeah. frustrating uh, at first. Uh, I was I was very young though. I was like 19 years old, so I didn't care at that time. But that was um, an amazing training. That was an amazing uh, uh, sort of platform for me to develop my social skills and and also do an elevator pitch you know I, I became a salesperson almost i had to sell an idea i had to sell a, 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 a ideology in less than 30 seconds and that, that's very good also for filmmaking uh, for the filmmaking industry yeah i think that really trains you to rejection I mean, if if that doesn't prepare you for rejection, I don't know what does. <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, probably ninety percent of the people you talk to are not happy to talk to you or not interested, and you have to make them change change their mind. And you, I think you're right in saying that it's very similar to pitching for movies or IPs because in practice you have just a few seconds or minutes to pitch for IPs before people decide to move on to the next. Speaking of which, somebody in the chat asked if anybody in this call ever ever tried pitching their IP to studios. And I can say that Simone did, uh, Francesca did, and I don't know, Max, did you ever pitch an I, IP I, to I pitched uh, an IP for a, a basically a gaming development platform to investors. So yes. I, I remember I that, yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a certain amount of experience in this call about that, but it's such a big subject. And in fact, I want to make a stream just for that because I think it's a very interesting subject. And so maybe we are going to talk, uh, Sagar, we're going to talk it, about it in another call. And maybe we, we will call back Simone and let's see if he's agree, if he's, if he will be free at that time. Uh, because I think pitching is also part of the networking process. I mean, it's probably the culmination and a new beginning of networking on a different level, of course. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, living the dream for a filmmaker or a game developer. If you have a chance through your talent and through connections to actually getting your idea pitched that's uh, that's one of the best things that that can happen to an animator you know yeah and it and it doesn't I, always I it doesn't always, ha always happens in a in a it doesn't always happen in a nice way necessarily a friend of mine uh, pitched a video game at one of those events where you can pitch video games to publishers and he told me that as he was pitching, pitching to this publisher, the publisher was, was looking the other way around. It was, my friend was talking and the publisher was, was looking sideways. And my friend told me, I, I wasn't even sure he was listening at all. But at, at the end, surprisingly, that was the publisher that picked up the game. So it, was, <laughs> it wasn't necessarily a pleasant experience to, to do that. But yes, we are probably going to do a stream about that. Um, that's a very interesting stage. subject yeah, yeah I think so I mean it probably you can probably talk about it for several uh, st streams because if you think of it there's games there's TV series there's shorts and they all have uh, a slightly different uh, process in which I think in terms of material you have to put together there, there, there is some there's some stuff which is in common and something which is different. Thank you for the questions again. There, there is something there about the um, uh, the story I told you before about the personal project. That's why you shouldn't underestimate personal projects with colleagues or friends that you've met throughout your path. You know, when during your career path, uh, this is the project that we made uh, before just before Christmas 2020 with uh, with a few friends friends, including uh, uh, a guy uh, who worked at the Blue Zoo with me, Pietro Licini, who modeled ah, right. the character. Ciao, Pietro! Ciao! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the Quokka. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so this is the Quokka. We, we made this and we thought, ah, oh, let's put it online, you know, let's see what happens. And and the guy in, in a few weeks got like over 20k followers on TikTok, you know, and it's like, it, it exploded in a couple of weeks after Christmas. And uh, now we are 
you know, struggling to find, to, to create new content because everyone is very busy. But the story I wanted to tell you is a studio in London got very interested in the Quokka and got in touch and said, this is exactly what we are looking for to pitch Unreal uh, with their Epic grant, you know. And uh, and so we actually out of uh, this was like a passion project that we made in our spare time. We actually ended up pitching Quokka, Quok the Quokka, as a potential TV series to Unreal Engine, which uh, which is crazy. Oh, like we never we never would have thought that. I I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if we're gonna get the money. I don't know if that's gonna go ahead. That's fingers crossed. Uh, that's all up to discussion but just the, the um just the element of having that possibility i think was very precious and was worth it you know we just it just started as a as a purely as a um, uh, experiment among friends and it ended up in something which could actually develop in a tv series so yeah i just wanted to say this mention this little story you know that because every personal project could open new doors and you don't even know about it and i think one thing that is worth noting is that it's not something you do on your own and because if you had to do it on your own it would take considerably longer and you wouldn't necessarily reach that level of quality that is necessary to attract that kind of attention so thank you 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 lose a bit of the um energy a little bit throughout the project if when you do it on your own because obviously the project you do it on your personal time sometimes you you might be not so disciplined and while when you involve when you have involved other people that you force to work on it more seriously then it makes it like a more achievable to finish the project itself yeah because it creates some sort of circle of expectations i mean you're working on it and you have involved someone else you don't want to waste their time so you work a bit more than you would if you were on your own maybe and then that someone else, if he's, uh, if they are equally involved, invested, they will do the same. So eventually, you will finish something if they are all involved that way. And that, and that's a network that you built by working already with other people. They trust that you can do your part, and then you work together. I think it's an excellent example, in fact. And also, thing- let, let, let's be honest. It's, it's. Uh, we are talking about CG or games. Uh, it's very difficult to be able to do everything yourself at a very high level. Yeah. You know, there are only yeah. a few people who can do, who can cover the whole pipeline themselves. You know, you need to collaborate with people. You need to m- match and mix with, with, with people who are better than you at many things. Otherwise, you won't ever achieve the same level of quality that yeah. a studio can. Simone, I don't know if you're aware, but the, if you search Quokka on Google, the first suggestion is Quokka Selfie. So you probably got something good there. <laughs> well done. Well, that's, yeah, well Quokkas done. Are, got famous because of the selfies. It looks like they are always smiling. Yeah. Right? I, did, I did see it before you actually sent it to me. Uh, like I already knew it. So... Let and I'm not screen. too much too, too into the social networking things. Like I mean, in um, like Facebook. Francesca, well. that's that's because you spend so much time on TikTok. That's the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. but, but I no. must admit that this this also resulted on me knowing something that I didn't want to know. That Quokka, they throw their babies to predators to scare <laughs> them away. <laughs> To scare them away, not bad. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a survival this is metal, strategy, guys. It is so metal. <laughs> and they <laughs> smile while doing that. Wow! <laughs> is that why you picked uh, the animal, Simone? <laughs> I I imagine well, they have a lot of kids. We could well, have just found the most of a, You know, it's a bit of a stereotype having the always smiling, happy social media influencer but behind that smile there is a lot of a lot deeper com- internal conversation and uh, you know a, a many layers of uh, pain and it, it's the whole social media criticism mm, the pressure that we are trying to do with a cartoon character rather than a human character but um it's early it's early we, we just started drafting the story so it's very early stages it's gonna be this like a uh, cute animal that then kills people uh when the camera is <laughs> off <laughs> just to release the stress from social media <laughs> yeah or try to suicide 
like uh, happy really... three friends. <laughs> They're, uh, classic. Classic. There is a question in the chat about networking during the pandemic times. Any thoughts? What oh, is that for me, it happened hard because we, I spent so much time. Uh, I, I moved to Budapest. I was here alone, uh, apart from my colleagues, but we were all working from home. And it was an excellent time to go back to uh, uh, communicating with people that I lost contact with. Uh, we, we organized session of online gaming. Uh, role playing online, randomly spoke to old colleagues. Uh, for me, it was like a, a booming experience for networking. Networking, and it, I don't think it's it's uh, um, just out of pure luck that I'm now doing my own uh, company and my own project. That I think it had consequences, uh, and it, it's an outcome of that period. And. Uh... Well, uh, just a second. Uh, I, in my case, uh, I agree with Max in a way because um, I didn't have any online presence before the pandemic <laughs> myself. Actually, I really disliked uh, being on social media and, and on even considering the idea of putting up a YouTube channel. But with the pandemic, I automatically went online. I guess it was a natural reaction to the fact that I couldn't even talk to the few people I would be able to talk to during the day. So in, in my case, I've, I think I naturally went on to other media. I don't know. I wouldn't know how to recommend one does it um, to create a network while you're online. I think, uh, are there some events? I mean, the first thing that comes to me are Discord Discord servers, which are, uh, themed in a in a way that is um, similar to what your interests are. So animation based or game based uh, servers are a good place to start. I get some people getting in touch to, uh, with me through those servers, and we are the one thing we have in common is that we are on the same server. I think it helps if you also see them. So, like for instance, uh, sorry, there's someone shouting. Uh, if you uh, if you actually have like a the webcam on and you see people in in, in 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 their face like i think it actually helps so i did uh do a webinar once and i get to got to know some um head of other studios that were it was really interesting because it was about like remote working and i got to understand like how they were doing remote working for instance so that was once and we also talked before the webinar uh, to uh, discuss what we were going to talk about. So that was a moment of networking. And then the other one that uh, Simone just reminded me before this call was um, giving feedback. So another event that I just uh, I just accepted. I mean, they, I, I just got, got asked uh, from someone in Blue Zoo if I could do it at the last minute. And I said yes. And there was this event in uh, Bournemouth School where you could give feedback. And uh, one could think, well, but they're just students. And why, I mean, what kind of network is that? But actually it's really relevant. It depends on where you are. So um, I give this feedback and there were some students that developed their story based on my feedbacks. And then they, uh, and then I uh, suggest uh, Blue Zoo to hire them because they actually got to a, a nice level of experience. And, and it can be useful because, the, you know, like even if someone is like a really junior, they can be they can become really good and they will remember the fact that you helped them in that moment. And also, uh, sometimes you might need like to you put together a project, not just with senior um, and super experts. Sometimes you uh, you rely on junior artists as well, because maybe the budget is really small. So that also could be could be an interesting uh, path to follow. And uh, yeah. And, yeah. Go ahead. Simon. Yeah just wanted to add uh, like in brackets that junior might become your supervisor in the exactly. future exactly ah, yes you never know exactly so be careful <laughs> how you treat uh, young people uh, be, be be there for helping them because you never know how quickly everyone's you know you know some people's career might develop I mean, so, this is what happened to me yeah. actually, <laughs> because I moved when I moved to the to the new um, department. Obviously, I mean, I I was in production, I was supervising. Then I stepped into the new department, and obviously, you're not supervising because you just stepped in a new department. And my supervisor is actually my junior back uh, when I was a lead, and we got uh, we we get along because we we did it when I was supervising him. So 
Uh, yes, like it's it actually, I mean, one of the things is like there is, you know, always, I mean, even if you are a director and Simona, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes you might, you will be doing maybe just animation. So it's not as if you always a director or always a supervisor. There are different positions that you might be covering. So you're not always at the top of the hierarchy. So like if you are good with people, <laughs> are that underwear? I'm always a director. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> inside, yes. But, but it can happen that you just like maybe uh, being uh, directed by someone that, that yeah. was uh, your junior before. So yeah, be careful what you, what you treat. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What was that that you put your head? <laughs> it's, you look uh, like an old grandma underwear from yeah. the 1990s. Yes, I didn't <laughs> yeah. think it was a hand underwear. No, it's my girlfriend thing for not wetting your hair when you're having a shower. Oh, a shower hat. <laughs> I don't wow. know why I have it here. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's an interesting question. That's that's very interesting. I haven't worn one in a long time. I think more pie uh, than either. <laughs> I, oh, I, no. think, no. I think I <laughs> think the the point Francesco was making about students is is very very relevant. I think we should not forget that the the reason why people are students right now it's merely a coincidence of the timeline that we are placed on. They just happened to be born after uh, after we were, so they are students while we are not. And uh, wise, and so wise, I mean, they're... It's or, true, or, right? Or simply they they started this uh, career path later. You know, not yeah, all exactly. the students are young. Maybe yeah. some time some people start at thirty years old with animation. Some people even later. Yeah. But you know, if you have something to tell, you might become a supervisor uh, or a, even a, a director uh, later on. And, yeah. uh, and that brings you, you know, in charge of people who've been in the industry for longer. That's, the, yeah, that's why it's always good to yeah. respect uh, people's uh, um, point of views and try to nurture new talents. It's also because you when, yeah, when you became director, I'm sure like you surpassed literally uh, a lot of people in the studio that were uh, there before you. Uh, and maybe they had a longer professional experience. So it's also about like trying to make them uh, respect you as a professional figure, although you were younger um, in the studio. But, uh, Absolutely, yeah. Let's say you're a student. Yeah. Uh, how would you build your network? What do you think? You work well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do. Ah, I remember. Sorry, this is like a, just. I, I remember something about this. How you build your network? There was a school that I'm not gonna mention, but there was a school that was really pushing the students uh, to. Uh, get in touch and do this heavy networking, uh, like really metal, uh, hardcore uh, networking. I remember like uh, there were some students literally following me uh, throughout the studio because they came to visit the studio and they were following me to trying to get a job. Um, I found it really, uh, I found it that really hardcore. And I think like maybe uh, like, yes, trying to be moderate. So, um, it's like a, that's trying to social connect. harassment. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> stalking. It was, it was really, it was really. I, I was, I was shocked because like they, they had this um, background in which I think like the the teachers told them that they had to get the best job, and they need to literally like uh, uh, surround the person that could give them the job. So like it, it, this is like uh, not so true. I mean like the, if you have a good showreel and you give it to me without harassing me. Um, it's enough, and also like if you are a decent person and uh, you don't also don't abuse the time of the person that um, you are asking for attention to. Like as in like if I'm the person that could give you a job, uh, I might be busy. So like respect the fact that I might be busy and uh, come to me. Like uh, give me what you want to give me, and if I have time, I will obviously stay there longer. But yeah, don't push it too hard. <laughs> Because like yeah that it, that was amazing like you can see like the students just going around trying to chase the director I, the supervisor. I will just challenge your your statement because yes. that's what's convenient for you, but of it's course. completely the opposite of what's convenient for a student that want to land that job. So what I'm telling wow. them is do that. Just like <laughs> ping people to the extent you no. you think you can, because I mean. How else? If you if you hand over your resume and you don't follow up, or you you you, you, you give up. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes being shameless and like also a bit annoying on a large mm -hmm. scale it works. It's like dating. Like you you know there's there's that person that tries with every girl he finds and usually scores a lot. And there's like the more 
uh, uh, um, introvert person that has a hard time. And let's be honest, the, is that the, personal the... experience, Max? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a uh, in, with with, with uh, um, girlfriend I'm, with girls in general. I, I'm uh, I used to be an introvert, so it wasn't easy. And I could see around me like the more extrovert kids, like uh, having better uh, opportunities and results. Um, I think being shameless at this point when you are looking for opportunity pays off. Uh, then you have to maintain though like if you propose yourself to be like the best animator or like mm. a super reliable mm. person that if you don't uh, uh, execute as you promised that will ruin your your reputation and that reputation is the core of the networking but like i i i will not suggest people do not harass uh, uh, others to to get into but the here, network i was, do, I was like, about few proper i mean proper cheating <laughs> On, on the stairs, so I don't know. I think like, I mean, I understand your point, Max, actually, to be honest, uh, you want to make your presence memorable, uh, but you, you mean, you can do it in a different way. Also trying to understand the right moment could be really valuable. So like uh, trying to, yeah, trying to, to leave a good impression. I mean, leave an impression and obviously you need to, to step, to, to, to be a bit uh, bold in that, but uh, try to leave a good impression is better than trying to be just an impression. Well, uh, or don't stalk just Francesca or just one person. Please, just many of, stalk many of them, <laughs> so at least one will fall for it. Exactly. Yeah, but so if I have, yeah, I have not say, single stalking, guys. Yeah, I have to say that, like, I mean, that, that depends a lot, but I do judge the uh, personality a lot also on, on this impression that people give me on a personal level because the interviews are really, uh, really short usually. Uh, so it, I also want to make sure you are a person that you are pleasant to work with if I'm going to hire you. So it's different. But I think, like, I mean, I remember, like, I mean, I, I, because I know, I know Simone, I worked with him. He's like, he's one of the person, like, that is really, like, outgoing, really extrovert and really, like, pushes, like, and chase people. But in a good way. I mean, I don't, I've never seen him harassing anyone. <laughs> right, Simone? <laughs> <laughs> It's a very fine balance. Yeah. Yeah. There is no secret, <laughs> that there is no secret formula. Otherwise. <laughs> no, honestly, I, I agree with Max, but I also see your point, Francesca. If you leave a, a bad impression because you are too pushy, the the director or recruiter will will remember that. And yeah. when it comes the time, say, would you like to work with this person? you will think twice, like, uh, do I really want to work with someone so pushy and so, you know, uh, mm. time consuming in a sense. <laughs> and so, you know, uh, oh, energy, energy draining. Do I want to do that? You know, so it's a very fine balance. And, and the secret, there is no, the secret is there is no secret. The only advice I could give is uh, building your empathy. Uh, skills like uh, trying to develop that empathy skills if i see a professional which is busy i i walk into blue zoo i see francesca francesca is busy i need to sense that and say hey francesca i would love to become a, a compositor but i don't want to waste your time therefore do you mind if i contact you via email and francesca 100 percent will say yeah i would love you to to contact me via email because i recognize that in that moment, Francesca is not willing to talk. And it, it's very difficult. Sometimes it's a fine balance. But you have to, if you manage to start reading people, if you manage to start recognizing some signals you know, through empathy, uh, you can make those, that judgment. And therefore, sometimes an email is, would be more effective than introducing your own then, portfolio yes. live. Because in that, that's not the right time. That I think you I still to, introduce yourself yeah. as well in the, as you as you in your example you, you still introduce yourself as a person because you you were there uh, but you established uh, like a um, and yes a contact an emotional contact as in I know you're busy uh, but this is me and then uh, you, so you, there are I think there are different approach and I think it's like a, yeah there, there's no right or wrong but yes like if you uh, present yourself as like a, someone that understands the situation obviously that's a, a plus. I think there is a fine balance. I think Max is leaning towards don't give up ever. And, no, does, and, yes. and, and Francesca and Simone are more that remember not to be <laughs> too pushy. Uh, to and I think, yes. I think they are both right. And there is a fine balance right there. 
But yeah, you shouldn't really give up, in my opinion, anyway. No, but, yeah, it's there, not to give up. Absolutely, yeah. I, I support that uh, that point of view. And it's there just, is uh, be 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 sure you're smart while you are not giving up. Mm -hmm. sure <laughs> to, <laughs> to not to knock uh, at the wrong time. Try to knock at. 4 p.m. not at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> that usually works better, yes. <laughs> and going back, going back to the students, uh, just because I, I happen to teach right now, in my opinion, the best network you can build while you're at school is to, when you do group projects with other students, make sure you deliver what you are supposed to deliver. Don't disappear. And then every time they ask something of you, you have a new explanation of why that something is not there. I mean, very often stuff happens and you may even be right, but one, two, three times at a certain point, people will just think that the only thing they can get from you is an explanation of why the stuff isn't there. So uh, th I think that's very important. And you will be remembered after school as the person in that group who were, wasn't really contributing that much. So I think that's where you can start. And of course, right now, I, and, and of course, Right now, as you, as we are all online still, although this thing is going to change, hopefully, you have the chances to talk to people and, and who are in the industry very often, in fact. So, uh, as Max said, get in touch and, and be a bit, I mean, assertive about, uh, especially if you, if you can deliver, I would say, if you can deliver, like Max says, be assertive about the fact that you want to work in this industry. And I think it's going to be okay if you knock at the door at times where the other people are not sleeping or having dinner or <laughs> not working oh. their ass off. <laughs> I think in the, I mean, in, in Max's case, I mean, obviously you have a portfolio of modeling. You know that if someone is looking for a modeler and you just, even if you push a bit, you know that they're, they're going to be satisfied with what you're providing because you, you are an expert in that field. I mean, you know what you're doing. So it's also like that uh, you have a this background where you, you're sure also of your uh, capability, I think. So that's, that's also like it makes it like I mean if you push a bit more that makes it like still valuable for them, um, while maybe another person that's like has a bit more like a, mm -mm, like a showreel and still developing might not be uh, might not be hundred percent like able to push as much as you can I think. Mm. And uh, there is something as well in the chat and I want to use this as a closing note before we go on to the recommendations, and it's from Numako who says that um, it. W it says that, uh, I'd say, do your work and cash the check. It won't really matter at the end because politics and nepotism will throw everything out of the window. I, I think this has to do with the fact that maybe um, there is a, a layer on politics in every production that may go beyond this um, professionalism that you've built, if I'm reading this correctly. And, and then make no mistakes, they add, and you're dealing with strangers and friendship take years to develop and sustain. And I think this last part in particular is quite true. I mean, you're at the end of the day, you, you're there to develop, you're pro developing a professional relationship, but you have to see if you're also developing a friendship. I think the two things don't necessarily go together. You may still have very separate lives. And uh, although I think that for business partnership it, partnerships is better if you know the other person's life a little bit, at, at least just to know who you're working with. And I'm not sure whether nepotism uh, will always uh, always prevails because at a certain point, if it's a matter of money um, in a company, the decision will be taken based on the on the money, I guess. And that may go through uh, beyond nepotism. What do you think, guys? Well, I don't think, I mean, I think like we did a lot of uh, networking. I mean, I'm taking it as Brazil, well, obviously, every studio you start with um, has its own politics inside, but it's not politics as in, it's just like the normal politics. It's like the, what was before you joined the company? What was there before, like the relationship between people and the fine balance between, like, uh, yeah, like the fine structure that you don't see, but it's there already in the studio. So like, uh, you don't need to necessarily see it in a negative way. You can work on, with that as in you walk your way up um, with your skills and, uh, and, and with your personality. So it's like uh, sometimes there might be, I think for a bigger studio, there might be more like of a wall, maybe sometimes, I don't know, because I haven't been in a huge studios. But uh, when you are um, in a studio, you normally try to assess the situation 
uh, this politics that you you see it and you try to assess it and you can work with it it's like it's not it, it shouldn't be a closed door because studios in cg they do need people that can work and can do nice work so if they when they when uh blue zoo they found out that simone was good in directing they used him as a director i mean it's like it wouldn't make any sense not to do it <laughs> look at him i mean wouldn't you trust him <laughs> well, would, wouldn't you hire someone like simone <laughs> So it's, I mean, I don't there know. will always be there will always be politics in every studio. I I started being a freelancer as I said in 2018 now, and it's been three years. I I went to different studios. You always find these dynamics in every single studio. Everywhere, right? yes. there will be always the one who you know is sort of uh, got there because of connection or friendship. There will be always that one person who tries to steps over step over you there will be always people who don't like too much that you are there in that position <sighs> unfortunately that's human nature i'm yeah. sorry to say there will not be a studio where you don't find these people uh, especially if the studio is bigger than you know 100 people and it, it grows then but but that's uh, i think i think socializing and networking is a way to to go around this, you know, the, the the more social you are, the more you show you are up for making a, 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 a genuine connection with people, the more you will avoid certain situation that can hurt you in a sense. Networking I mean, itself even... is, is basically politics, if you think. It uh, is, it, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's like you leveraging all your uh, reputation and your knowledge to obtain something that usually it's to the benefit of all the people that are involved. But still, uh, um, that uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, naive to think that uh, a studio, just because you deal with video games or cartoons, is not affected by basic human uh, uh, dynamics that we call politics. But it's it's kind Absolutely. of a, it's a, it's obvious to be there. I mean, as soon as you put a group of people together, there would be a um, balance of power, and there would be politics. It's like it's uh, it's something that you deal with every day. So like uh, it's just that uh, you don't need to yeah perceive it as just as a negative, as in, in a negative way. You part of that politics as soon as you enter in a studio, and uh, where you put yourself, then it depends on you and uh, and how uh, you work with it. I think it's uh, yeah just something that. Uh, Simone mentioned, like, it's also like uh, when you do networking, do it uh, in a genuine way. Don't try to just like mm. uh, uh, use it as like a um, basically like a, a tool, just constantly and uh, like trying to talk to people uh, just in a really robotic way. Yeah, and because I have to. <laughs> some, yeah, just trying to obtain something. It's, I think it's like if you try to be yeah. genuine, it's like uh, yeah. If Max, for example, you you did like you said like well, I was in, I'm interested in uh, board games and that's why I connect to people with board games. That was genuine because you are interested in that and that's something in common you have. So try to. Um, like it's important to do it, but it's also important not to force it in a way that seems like just uh, you going around and uh, systematically try to uh, be friends with with people. It's not even yeah. Don't look don't look at people as dollar signs. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to, uh, uh, like make make a connection last, mm -hmm. and and that's the reason why I'm here. That's the reason why uh, Francesca Amedeo, you you invited me to this. I mean, even though we don't, we might not see each other for six months but every time we talk it feels like time hasn't passed it's always you know the same genuine relationship because you know it, it, we started as uh, as uh, colleagues uh, and then I, I also came to escape basically I became your colleague Amedeo as well <laughs> for a short period of time but you know we always we what I'm trying to say is even if uh, a relationship you might you know get advantages or get help from friends or help friends or colleagues that doesn't mean that the relationship cannot stay genuine throughout the years it can stay you know it can remain the same and if if you have a chance for a friend why not you can open a door or if a friend has a door to open for you why not that can happen it, i'm not saying that happens every time these these relationships yeah. are rare maybe you have uh, five six max ten people that you can sort of trust and call sometimes say hey there is a new chance here but yeah try to maintain these uh, these few relationships that you really believe in because 
you know, it's always it's always good to have that backup. It's always very very beneficial. I think no, at the end of the day, the, the people you establish that sort of true relationship with, if we can call it this way, uh, a direct one, are the people who are going to stay longer. In fact, if you just go around with the sole purpose of professional networking, you're going to build exactly that kind of network, right? A professional network that maybe you doesn't include anybody you can talk to. So that's something to consider. You're going to build exactly what you're trying to build. No, Guys, so I have a question before, sorry, before we, we close. I think it's, it's relevant uh, and I think we skipped it, but I would really like to know uh, how, Simone, you managed the, the communication with all those people. What tools did you use? Like, did you speak with email, Slack? How did the hell did you keep the thing <laughs> together? You, you mean during only a child? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, during only a child, basically, um, remote networking, a remote uh, communication uh, was already cool for us before it became a thing in 2020. So we started in 2019 working, um, uh, communicating on Slack. We, we, make, uh, we made a channel on Slack, uh, similar to the one we made now with the uh, admission pandemic. And uh, we uh, communicated each, each segment of the animation, each uh, technique of the animation had its own channel. And then a lot of uh, Skype and Zoom calls. Uh, I, that, that was how we communicated. Unfortunately, I used to speak German quite well when I was 18, but my German got worse and worse over the years while I, my English improved. Uh, so we we um, we talked in English. So we with everyone in uh, in Swiss German side and Swiss French side, we we communicated in English on Skype. But I think sharing stuff on a channel such as uh, Slack or Amedeo, you mentioned before Discord, that's very helpful for a personal project. Very powerful tools. Did the, the, the team that collaborated to this project interact with each other through Slack or 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 like it was mostly them communicating with you or, or, or it was more like a blend of yeah. the, the... Some of, some of the uh, segments were more organic, which uh, some of the segments uh, combined to the animation and stop motion together. Therefore, there were different artists communi communicating and interacting for the same segment of the animation. Um, they there was a as usual um on slack uh, teams uh, uh discord there is a common chat so people were actually able to communicate with everyone throughout the production but i must say they were mostly communicating with me like throughout you know for feedback uh, uh yeah this this uh, that one uh, that one segment where with the girl designed in the center on the square on the post-it that was a collaboration between different artists because there was stop motion and 2d simultaneously sweet uh, and and there are other such transitions during your short movie so there is a lot of uh, mingling of techniques so i imagine that you had to do some coordination absolutely yeah uh, the transition between one technique and the other was a big discussion for uh, every artist and artist had to communicate together and uh, yeah, we, we use the mix really, Max. We use the mix of uh, Slack, uh, emails, and calls. Uh, that, and that before the pandemic started. It was before, Do you think... It was, uh, I was in London, and most of the other artists were in Switzerland. Do you think uh, there were downsides to this, tech, to this way of organizing the project? Because I've worked remotely for a long time through Slack, like uh, uh, since for us, it probably Slack is out, and before that we... I was already working remote uh, and most of the projects that I participated in were remote projects and everything pretty much went seamless, but nothing to the scale of what you did. So do you think there were some downsides to having the remote uh, as a, a platform for, for your job, for your, your production? Uh, having stuff remotely, um certainly uh, sped up the production because I could be on a call with a person in Zurich 
and after two hours I could be in a call with a person in Madrid. Uh, and that was very handy. However, that will never beat the feeling of visiting someone in its own studio, you know, like actually sitting at the desk, seeing where they work, interacting with them, brainstorm with them. I, there will, you know, there is no, nothing is going to beat that, that human live interaction where you can feel the synergy, you can feel the energy growing in the room. Uh, that, that was lacking. That was lacking. I had to find the energy myself on my own while I was in London. Uh, I worked on Only a Child in my spare time uh, in the evening and weekends while I was directing something at Jellyfish Pictures. And, and sometimes I lack that energy. I love human interaction because it gives me energy and I can give energy. And sometimes that was missing. That, that's the downside, I think. So if you, had, if you could have it uh, in your, 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 your uh, say, the best uh, situation, you would have visited each uh, sub-studio uh, individually at least once, yeah. but, still, but still organize everything remote. Yeah, that was the plan. That was the plan to visit everyone <laughs> and, uh, and, and also record, uh, like film a uh, making off in every studio. And that all collapsed uh, in March uh, 2020 <laughs> when, uh, yeah, when COVID came. Uh, I had to abandon that idea. But the, the idea was actually to go around and visit everyone and, uh, and bring some uh, panettone for everyone. <laughs> One, one last question: Did any of the of your collaborators like uh, did did any of them drop before the end of the project because they couldn't support uh, they couldn't stand the, the remote uh, work system? No, no, no. They they all managed. They all managed in the end because uh, we gave lots of freedom to these artists. They all worked independently and they showed me different steps of production, such as the animatic. Uh, a block and any final results. So they were actually happy, I think, to be working remotely because that meant lots of freedom. Uh, there was only one guy who dropped because he had too many uh, commercial projects. He, he couldn't fit the schedule of only a child with his time, but that was not related to remote working. It was his, his own personal reasons. Uh, but apart from that, everyone else uh, survived. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done, Thank Simone. You. I watched the movie and I really liked it as well. I thought it was a great effort. And um, to, to close this call, guys, I think it's time for recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what we have tonight. So Max, do you want to start maybe? Yeah, sure. For this week, I decided to recommend a mind-bending tabletop game called Root. Um, Root is an asymmetric board game in, where, uh, in which you take the part of one of many factions of sweet-looking animals try to conquer and rule uh, the clearing. It's a, a piece of a forest. The, it's not this guy riding a bike. It's, <laughs> is, uh, is, it, is this the game? This is the game, exactly. It's like a very high score. It's like overall rank 26 in uh, Board Game Geek. The game is absolutely complicated because every faction has its own complete different way to play. And it's, it's not a game for beginners. But once you start playing it, it's absolutely fantastic. I suggest anybody interested in like a top-notch uh, board game like this, to start with the online version. Um, it's developed by Dieworks Interactive. Uh, it's pretty okay. cheap. You, can, you have tutorials that explain you how to play the game. And most of all, you don't have to learn all the factions because other people will be playing knowing how the game works. Uh, it's lovely. The visual are really, really sweet. Uh, very nice sound effect. And having it digital really helps. Then when you are master of it, you find other crazy people that would like to play with you, and you probably can buy the game, uh, the, the the physical copy. But I strongly suggest this. Um, it's a good way to keep your brain alive. By the way, playing board games with people is an excellent way of getting to know people. And when uh, you absolutely. play together with someone, that's probably one of the best ways you get to know someone, in fact. 
So yes, thank you very much, Max. I posted the link in the chat so that people can have a look. And then I think even uh, Daniel as well had a game that he wanted to suggest. Yes, to, to mirror my networking ability, it's a single player <laughs> game. <laughs> and um, <laughs> basically, uh, this, it's going to be this Coliseum for today. And it came out 2019, and, but I picked it out only recently because of the uh, huge backlog, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, it's like, um, sure, it is a video game. However, be prepared to read a lot. I, I would say it's more of a, I would, could even call it an interactive book story because, yeah, there is like graphics are honestly serviceable. But it's really not the main thing. Uh, it's like the story is um, you start that you lost your memory. However, you're like a, a police investigator. And then things spun out during the, 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 the story. It's like it's a crime story. You have to solve a sort of a crime. But you also have to figure out who you are, kind of. And I found it really fascinating because as in classic RPGs, you have like a, you know your characteristic as a um, strength or or like a wisdom sort however the skills they're very peculiar because they they um first of all there are some skills that are really like a knowledge of the police corps or what like a policeman would do and when you start to put many points into the skills the skills themselves will suggest what you you to say what you should say in the dialogue so as in many of these games you have like a you know you talk with npcs and you interact with them you have dialogues and you usually have like many lines of dialogue like four choices five choices but the skills that you pump they will recommend you so if you pick like uh, something that is a uh, physical strength they will push you to overpower the situation they will tell you ah punch this guy in the face you know ultimately the choice is still yours but it's really, I found that it was a really well done way to implement this kind of thing. And um, I couldn't put it down. So I, I think I finished it in just four days or something. And there is a lot to read. So take it more as a reading a book with some visual cues kind of thing. But uh, it's very, very much worth uh, the, the time. Thanks, so that's Daniel. That's my recommendation for today. Yeah. It, it it sounds it sounds like something I would like to play. In fact, mm -hmm. and then we have Francesca. That uh, these times I recommend, recommend monster. I thought about a lot about networking and uh, and what I could suggest <laughs> for networking. So this is like a bit of unusual uh, networking uh, <laughs> a point of view. But uh, so the story is is this is monster is a is a cult. It's like it's uh, it's a great manga. It's a great anime. And it's quite long, but if you follow it till the end, it's really well done, the story. So the story is about um, Kenzo Tenma, that became uh, super famous as a, as a protagonist. He's a Japanese surgeon uh, in, uh, living in Germany in the post-war. And he uh, saved the life of a, um, of a kid. And he finds out that this kid actually is a serial killer. And then he chases him uh, around Europe um, to... To find him and kill him because basically like he, he regrets he regrets what he did uh, by saving him and um and by doing that he's actually met, met lots of people and every person in the story has a connection to uh to the serial killer and every uh, every person is connected to the to, to to each others and obviously the protagonist goes around creating this, creating this like good network while the uh antagonist obviously creates this um network and the on the opposite side of people of kind of evil people people of uh, people with bad intentions and it's incredibly interesting because uh, again it's done in the post-war so also um they also go in the germany um uh in the germany that suffered from the uh from the post-war and um uh, the secret the, police yes so yeah it's extremely well done also well um studied i think Yes, and uh, it's very well researched. It actually looks yeah. like Germany at that time, and I, except for the fact that the best surgeon in Germany is Japanese. Japanese, but that's <laughs> typical of any animes, right? <laughs> it's very common. I have to say that this series is is fantastic, and until at least episode thirty something, I thought it was amazing. 
And then well, well, at least the surgeon is not also 18 years old, like in Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, he's not a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not a teenager. <laughs> yeah, and it's really moderate as well. It's, you don't see him shouting or doing anything yeah, that yeah. you see in the anime, like uh, sometimes with the, in the hero. It's like it's it's a really normal person. He his motto now, is that Kurosawa every... is, is my favorite Japanese manga artist. He's absolutely spectacular. It's Have really you read that something else that you want to recommend of him? <laughs> Pluto, well, 20th time. Century Boys. No one, I need to read it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> next time. And then, yes. we, because we, it's getting late and we also have to say goodbye. <laughs> and, and next, from me, we have uh, something which is a bit, it's, it's a book as usual, I guess. And it's something that, despite the theme, is actually very interesting and I would say fun to read. Uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that. But it is actually quite good. The, the book is called The Gulag Archipelago from uh, Solzhenitsyn, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. It is some sort of report from the, the prison system of a Soviet era in Russia. And it's written with a lot of irony. In fact, in, uh, in many ways, uh, at a certain point, uh, Solzhenitsyn says that in the West, we think that there is no matter for comedy in uh, in Russia, but we are wrong. And he describes the prison procedures in the Soviet era and, and their senseless, senseless bureaucracy. And it's amazing. It's really a good read. And the reason why I'm mentioning this here is because he mentions in the book that once you get into the prison system, the only thing you have is yourself, the people you know, and the languages you know. So... That, that's the only network you can rely upon and that's the only thing that is worth to you and that's the only thing you can carry with you wherever you go and so he says that whenever you meet someone it's a good idea to strike a conversation because you get to know their story and this feeds back into our our um our call, our entire stream, in fact. And I really suggest you read it. It's a great book and it's fun. You wouldn't believe it, but it is actually fun because of the way it's written. So it, you wouldn't believe because of the subject, but it's really quite good. And then um, I think we are missing only Simone, but Simone suggested so many events, which I, Simone, as you were talking, I was pasting the links of the events in the chat because there were so many. Um, if you have anything else to suggest, recommend, shoot. Yeah, maybe, maybe I won't. I won't suggest a, a book or a game. Uh, I, I will just go through a very small list of events that I particularly recommend. I think they are uh, they are wonderful. Uh, one is Annecy. Uh, if you want to meet new people, especially European artists, uh, go to Annecy Animation Festival. Fantastic experience, I guarantee. There is in the UK Manchester Animation Festival, who is uh, has become uh, very large and a, one of the leading events for uh, pitching uh, new new stories, uh, for um, talks, uh, for uh, presentations, and also for uh, industry awards. So, yeah, make sure you check that out. In the US, there is a Lightbox Expo uh, organized by Bobby Chu and CTN. Expo. Uh, they are both excellent. I've never been uh, personally, but I heard very, very good reviews uh, of both. Uh, in Europe, again, there is a THU. Trojan horse was a unicorn. Uh, it, it, it sounds uh, fun <laughs> as an event, and it is, in fact. Uh, it's a wonderful event organized in person. For a couple of years, it was held in Malta. Uh, this year, I, be, I believe it's coming back after post-pandemic in Portugal. Um, very recommended. Um, FMX, where Francesca went to give feedback and to, to find new talent in Germany, Stuttgart. View Conference in Turin. I'm a big friend of your conference i've been helping out and giving you know talks and feedback at your conference for over five six years now and they have amazing speakers every year including yes. hans zimmer and uh, you know guest uh, uh brett bird was there a few years ago it's, it's like ed at ed catmull and so on it's like they they managed to get la creme de la creme of the industry uh, SIGGRAPH, 
uh, in USA um, or SIGGRAPH Asia as well. And uh, for the, sorry, Amedeo, it's, I'm going quite fast here. Don't, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I'm keeping, I'm keeping up. <laughs> and for the um, uh, UK-based artist uh, Encounters Short Film Festival, that's also a very uh, recommended film festival with lots of uh, networking and social events uh, happening in Bristol. Uh, that's a small list. There would be so many others, but that's a small list for, for me if you want to start networking book your ticket for one of these events uh, as soon as it's 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 possible to travel again make sure you book one of these events because it's uh, it's it's very it's worth it it's a bit of time and money but uh, it can go a long way if you make the right connections Nice. Thank you very much, Simone. Guys, go to these festivals, at least those you can try. And if you want to work in games, you're interested in games, take part in, in game jams, guys. Game jams, animation jams as well, if you want to do animation. It's a great way to build a network through the stuff that matters, which is your professionality, I guess, right? The way you work. So go there. And I guess we will call it a night then. So I would like to thank Simone for joining us today. It was great. In fact, thank you very much again. Thanks, oh, Santa Mozzarella. It's finished <laughs> Let's finish I, this I, evening. I would like to say it's our first guest. It's ah, a, yes. And Simone is also our, our first guest. Our <laughs> first guest. Let's make a pizza It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. And thank you, Max. Hi, Max for and Daniela. Today. I hope we can uh, meet in person at some point. Of at course, a certain yes. point, yes. Thank you very much, you all. And thank you very much for joining us tonight and for the questions in the chat. They were really useful, I have to say. They really sparked some uh, dialogue there, I think. So have a good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.